Although they sound like a recent invention, hearing aids have been around as early as the 17th century, although at that time they weren't as small and nifty as they are today. They were in the form of large trumpets that increased the audible sound pressure to augment hearing difficulties. Today, tiny aids placed in the ear canal are barely visible to others. But how are they made? Before production of the hearing aid can begin, the degree of hearing loss is processed by an apparatus known as the audiometer. Much like a test for weak eyesight, the audiometer test is designed to measure the extent of hearing loss for a person. The result of the test is in the form of an audiogram, a chart that shows how well a person hears in terms of frequency and loudness. The next step is to make a mold for the ear canal. This is done so the hearing aid can be designed to very precise measurements. An auto block is inserted in the ear canal to protect the eardrum from damage while making the mold. Once done, a silicone impression making material is inserted into the ear. Once it solidifies, it is removed from the ear. Now that the audiometer test is done and the ear impression is taken, all order data, desired product features, and the results of the test are entered into a computer to determine the operating range for the hearing aid, specifically which levels of amplification are required for the user. For some manufacturers, the computer also selects the electronic circuitry to be used. Typically, an order card will be prepared and sent to the production line along with the ear impression. The jelly-like mass of silicone that was removed from the ear will be used to make a positive imprint. It is soaked in warm wax forming a solid film over the impression. It is then placed in a silicone cup. The cup is then filled with silicone which solidifies in only 10 minutes. The hardened silicone block is removed from the container. Then the silicone impression is removed from the block leaving a positive imprint. The case of the hearing aid can be made from this mold. The mold is first heated in 110 degrees Fahrenheit or 43 degrees Celsius water and air is blown through it to clear away any impurities. At this point, a technician will mix liquid acrylic of equal parts monomer and polymer for a structurally sound shell and add the desired pigment to give the shell a pink, tan, or brown color. The technician pours the liquid into the heated silicone mold and after 10 seconds pours off any excess, leaving a thin acrylic shell inside the mold. After 10 minutes of cooling, the technician pulls from the mold a shell that is a perfect replica of the raw impression of the ear canal. Today, the entire process of making an acrylic shell from the silicone impression can be done within minutes via a 3D printing machine. Whether produced via 3D printing or manually, the shell still has to undergo finishing touches before it can house all the hearing aid components. After the acrylic shell is prepared, a technician grinds off the excess flanges from the shell. He will then add a vent or opening. A small piece of silicone wire shaped to the vent size is run through the inside of the shell and pulled out. The technician drills holes into the canal end of the shell for the receiver tube. After that, the outside of the shell will be buffed to a smooth, shiny finish. A technician will size the shell for a faceplate or flange, the area that will be exposed outside the ear canal using the vacuum form from the original impression. The plate will be carefully set at the correct angle for the user's ear. Now on to the various components that make the hearing aid. Working off of the results of the audiogram, audiologists and engineers work together with advanced computer-aided design CAD, software to create the components that meet the specific needs of individuals with hearing loss. Once the design is finalized, manufacturing can begin. Hearing aids consist of various components like the microphone, amplifier, receiver, and battery. The microphone is the first component that captures the surrounding sounds. It converts acoustic signals, sound waves, into electrical signals. The electrical signals from the microphone are then sent to an amplifier. The amplifier increases the intensity or amplitude of the electrical signals, effectively making the sounds louder. After signal processing, the amplified and tailored electrical signals are sent to the receiver or speaker. The receiver converts these electrical signals back into acoustic signals, essentially reproducing an enhanced version of the original sounds. All of these are powered by batteries which provide the necessary energy to run the electronic components. Depending on the type of hearing aid, batteries can be disposable or rechargeable. The components and circuits are run on a ceramic substrate base of various designs. The substrate is made of a screen printing technique that alternates layers of conductive and insulating materials depending on the engineered design. The conducting layer contains gold, silver, and the insulating layers contain silicone compounds. Between the printing of each layer, the substrate is passed by a conveyor through a furnace where it bakes for two hours at 850 degrees Fahrenheit or 454 degrees Celsius. This seals the layers and creates the color patterns characteristic of printed circuit boards only on a smaller scale. 
The various electronic components are bonded by hand to the gold and silver parts on both sides of the substrate. A technician will interconnect the devices using gold wire of 0.001 inch or 0.025 millimeter thickness. Lastly, the components are sealed in an epoxy paste and heat hardened. Working from the parts card or bill of materials determined at the outset of production, a technician assembles the electronic hardware on the faceplate where holes have been drilled for mounting the microphone, amplifier, battery compartment, and volume control, all hand-wired with colors for traceability. The wires are soldered into place. After this, the receiver is mounted into the shell and a preliminary hearing check is made on the instrument. Rigorous quality control measures are implemented throughout the manufacturing process. Various tests are conducted to ensure that each hearing aid meets the specified standards and performs as intended. This includes functional tests, acoustic measurements, and inspections for any defects in the casing or components. Hearing aids are also tested using a computerized ANSI, American National Standards Institute, program that analyzes the production parameters and produces a performance chart. A technician reviews the chart on screen, checking tolerance levels and other specifications. He or she will print a copy of the results and include it with the finished hearing aid. Hearing aids have come a long way in today's time and age. Customized aids can be programmed to be linked to an app or on your phone, allowing you to adjust the settings at the touch of a finger. In fact, hearing aids aren't just used for hearing anymore and can also be used to translate languages in real time, like something out of a sci-fi film. Before the hearing aid is packaged and sent to the end user, a final round of testing and calibration is conducted. This ensures that the device functions accurately and consistently. Once the hearing aids pass all quality control checks, they are packaged for distribution. The packaging is designed to be user-friendly, providing clear instructions on usage, maintenance, and any additional accessories. Hearing aid manufacturers are continually investing in research and development to improve technology, enhance performance, and address the evolving needs of individuals with hearing loss. If you like this video, there are plenty more on our channel, so be sure to check them out.